water. Until we started living on a boat, it was just something that we took for granted. You turned the tap and out it came. But this stuff, fresh drinking water, is the biggest single limiting factor on a cruising boat. And quite frankly, we don't think you can do any serious cruising without a water maker. Yeah, they did it in the past and everything else, but let's face it, these days we have technology. Let's make the most of it. We've been using a Rainman portable water maker on board since uh, 2020, so over three years now. And uh, what we thought we'd do is give you a look at A, how it works, and do a review after that three year period, because we see plenty of videos where people get a brand new one and say, this is how it works and it's wonderful. So we thought now, after we've been using it for three years, we can probably provide a very balanced and educated view on exactly how it's performed, what we like about it, and what we'd probably do a little bit different. So um, here's to you, this is all about water. Now Rainman offer a range of portable um, water makers, 12 volt, the uh, 110 or 240 volt, which is what we've got here, or they've got another which is self-contained with its own Honda engine built in. Uh, we already had a Honda 2.2 generator, so we went, we'll go with the, uh, one, uh, with the 240 volt version. Um, it weighs about 24 kilo. This is the portable, as I say. Lives in the lazarette in the cockpit. So, just a case of pulling it out and setting it up. The other major component, of course, are the membranes. And we went with the high capacity uh, 240 inch membranes. That gives us 120 to uh, 140 litres per hour is uh, the claim, but we'll test that shortly. It's also fairly heavy, 20 plus kilos. This one lives above our port fuel tank in the engine room. Uh, there's a bit of space there and it can be secured away there. As you'd expect, the unit uses a pre-filter. Now Rain Man doesn't tell you this, but we've found that Removing the filter after each use and just letting it dry out in the sun really does extend the life of them. Because even though we will do a flush, as you'll see later, there's still a certain amount of microbes and little organisms, etc., that'll be sitting on the on the filter, and it gunks up a lot quicker if you don't take it out between uses. While the unit doesn't vibrate much, we still either use an old towel or a, uh, this piece of indoor-outdoor carpet just to sit the unit on and protect the decks. Now the setup of the pump unit itself is really simple. There's a three metre uh, power lead on it. I can just run that through to where I've got a little extension lead. This is our intake line. Got a cap on it. And that just on a captive ring and it just slides back down. The strainer just clips straight onto the hose. No problem at all. We do uh, give this a brush off every few uses um, and it is absolutely essential to use. We have had a, a plastic bag stuck over it and if that had got up into the pipe it would have definitely caused a, a blockage, air and then can, that can damage your high pressure pump. So always, always use your, uh, your pre-strainer. The intake pipe then just goes straight over the side. You wanna make sure that the intake line is well down into the water, clear of the surface, so anything floating by is not going to block the strainer. But you also, if you're in shallow water, make sure that it's not actually sitting in the bottom and sucking up any dirt or mud. We've got three lines in with the membranes inside their high pressure cylinders. This one is the brine line. Basically, it's the waste line. It just goes over the side as well. The salt water that passes through goes over the side with it. This black line is our high pressure line. It's got a clip fitting to go into our high pressure pump. It's just a simple clip fitting. Make sure it's secure, no problem. The white line is the actual product line. This is where your drinkable fresh water comes out. 
Now we've got about, I think, two and a half metres or so attached to the uh, high pressure cylinders, but it's an easy just click fitting and extends out to 10 metres, so you can run this up forward to where if you've got a bow tank or as long as your boat's not over 10 metres long, you've got no problem. As I mentioned earlier, we originally powered our rain man with a small Honda petrol generator. But since then, we've done an upgrade on our Dreamtime and we now boast a 3.5 kVA diesel generator in the engine room. Life is now so simple. With the intake line nicely in the water and the brine line ready to pump that waste overboard, away we go. In with the high pressure cylinders is the control valve and gauge. What we do is we bring the pressure up slowly And our target is to get it up here in the middle of the green zone, the operation zone. Obviously the red is uh, too high a pressure. Now you don't want to just screw it straight up straight away because the pressure will be too strong instantly and you can actually blow seals and do damage to it. So as with all water makers, it's intended that the pressure comes up reasonably slowly. I will fast forward it a little bit here. And there we are right in the middle of the operating green zone. Here's our water coming out from our product line. So what I like to do is I like to uh, run it straight into this 20 litre bucket first up. We're going to need flush water later on at the end of the operation anyway. So I get that first, that runs it through, everything's nice and clear. Then it's a simple matter with our water tester that we can get off Rain Man as well. We have a look and it's showing around 200 parts per million. Drinking water needs to be 500 to 800 parts per million. So this is well, well under, more pure than what you'll get out of your tap at home. It's pretty simple if you want to measure how many litres per hour you are making. It's a case of just run the water into a 20 litre drum and run your stopwatch. When you've got 20 litres, see how many minutes you've got and we'll be able to work out how many litres per hour. Now I'd call that a generous 20 litres and just under seven minutes. Okay, so 20 litres made in let's call it seven minutes. There's about eight and a half, seven minutes in, in an hour. So in theory, that's 170 litres per hour. Now that figure shocked me a little bit. Um, so straight down here to Google and I checked on the Rain Man site and they definitely say <coughs> 120 to 140 litres an hour. But then I had a look at the effect of water temperature. And basically what it's saying is for every degree, you get an extra 3% output. Now we're, we're up here in, uh, in Indonesia, not too far from the equator. I've just checked the water temperature, 30 degrees centigrade. Uh, looking at Australian water temperature at the moment, what I'm seeing is 24, 25 degrees centigrade down there in summer. So we're five to six degrees higher. Call it five degrees, that's 15% more production output. Hence why we can get the 170 litres up here. Unbelievable. I knew it was rocking, but I didn't realise I was doing it that fast. At that rate, it doesn't take all that long to fill our big tanks. When we finish making water, we literally just slowly back off the pressure. And then we're going to set up for our flush. Then we just simply turn the unit off. We're going to bring our intake line up. We'll take the strainer off. Going to put it in our flush bucket and run that nice, clean, fresh water maker water back through everything. So that's going to run through the pump, it'll run through the pre filter, it'll go through the uh, membranes, through the inside of the membranes, and all of the salt water that's in that system will get flushed out and overboard. And when we put it away, it's just going to have lovely, clean, fresh water in it. As I said, we like to uh, take the filter out 
let it dry out in the sun and make sure that there's no little microbes that stay alive on it and it really does make a difference. Now you see a little bit of cavitation in this line. When that pre-filter starts to get blocked, this will shake and rattle like hell. And it makes a big, big difference. And we're done. Simple as that. It's all flushed, it's ready to put away. So that's how it all operates. The next question is, after three years, how do we think it works for us? Well, one of the first things when it comes to how I rate a company is how they behave if something goes wrong, not when everything is perfect. In our case, we bought our Rain Man back in early 2020. And within a month of setting off cruising, it was having a problem. The pressure line was cavitating like crazy and it really just wasn't making the sort of water it should. It was just getting worse and worse and worse. And we were out on the Great Barrier Reef during COVID. Nowhere to run to, we were just trying to stay isolated. And naturally, I rang the company. And I have to say, I couldn't have asked for better. They talked me through all sorts of diagnostics and we couldn't fix it on the boat. What they asked me to do was uh, head to the nearest Rainman dealer, which happened to be the uh, chandlery at um, Able Point Marina back then. Um, so fortunately COVID had settled down in North Queensland and we took the option to go into the marina. We dropped off the Rainman. They freighted it at their cost overnight from Airlie Beach down to Sydney. Um, it was COVID, so transport overnight took three days. Uh, they saw on the tracking that it was being delivered on the Friday afternoon. By five o'clock closing, it hadn't arrived at their workshop. They rang the transport company and they said, yes, yes, it's still on its way. So they waited until it arrived at around six o'clock on Friday afternoon, took delivery of it, rang me at 10.30 on Monday morning when they'd got back into work. And it turns out that there was a fault with a high pressure pump. It had simply broken the shaft. Uh, they'd never seen it before. They're all off the shelf items, which is one of the good things about Rain Man I'll talk about later as well. So it's not a part of their manufacturer. They'd never seen it break before. They put a new pump in it and returned it to me. It was on the freight by midday that day. No cost to me. And I can't ask for better service than that. I mean, something went wrong. They fixed it as fast as was humanly possible. And we have not had a problem with its operation since then. Uh, you do have to ha keep an eye on the black high pressure line because it, it does vibrate. And as I uh, mentioned, as the pre-filter starts to get a little bit more clogged, it starts to vibrate more and more. If it's touching anything, it will chafe the actual protection of the line and will chafe whatever it's rubbing against. I run the line up and over our mizzen boom. It's wrapped in a towel so it's not touching anything and it comes down so the line actually doesn't touch anything and I have no problems. Um, before I used a towel, I just draped it up and over and it actually wore a hole in our sail bag. So that's just one thing to look out for. Um, other than that, we really haven't had any problems. We love its simplicity. I mentioned before that all the parts are actually off the shelf items. None of them are bespoke manufactured by Rain Man, I think other than the cases and things. So the good part of that is, if you do have a problem, doesn't matter where you are in the world, just about any hydraulic shop or workshop or whatever, you can buy the parts off the shelf and it can be repaired. They'll give you the instruction over the phone or you know you can find local dealers because in our, while it's an Australian design and Australian company, they're marketed all over the world now. What would we have done different? Uh, we bought the portable unit for ease because we could buy it, put it on the boat, and use it next day. Um, but in hindsight now after all these years, I wish we had actually gone with a fitted unit. 
And the beauty of that is if it's plumbed in as a permanent setup, you can use it while you're underway. So the unit itself, uh, 1400 watts of power, six amps it draws. So if you're motoring, you can do that, you know, from, from the power that's going into your batteries from your op motor. Uh, if you had a de decent battery bank, you can do it through your inverter, not a problem. While in theory we could make water underway, we've got that intake line that's going to just hang in the water and trail up behind us and there's cavitation in the water behind us and if it sucks any air rather than water that can get form an airlock in the pump. The pump runs without water and it does damage. So it's not something we've ever risked but with an inbuilt system it would be a, simply a case of being able to make water while we're underway be able to make water whenever we're running the generator in our case, let's make some water um, because it's permanently installed. And they have a automatic back flush. So it'll back flush its system out of your own water tanks without a problem. So if you are considering one, hey, the portable is great, but it, you know, maybe we're getting lazy in our old age. It's a bit of a pain in the bum to actually move the cockpit table when we're at anchor and get everything out, get the unit out, drag the high pressure cylinders out of the engine room and they are heavy, um, get it all set up and then pack it away. So for ease of use and for about the same sort of money we would go with a permanently installed unit. But other than that, after three years the only problem we've had with the unit at all happened in that first month. It was just a freak fault with a, with a, uh, with a shaft they fixed it and we have not had one hiccup with this thing ever since. Their after sale service has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, the accessories they offer are good. Uh, full disclosure, we have no relationship with Rain Man. We, we don't have any sort of deal with them, we don't get any kickback. So this is an honest review from just a user. Um, but from our experience, it is a fantastic product. What they've done is they've tried to dumb it down. They've made the whole system simple to operate and so there's no complexities that are, that are going to give you trouble and problems. That's why we love it. And uh, that's why, quite frankly, after three years, we'd still recommend it. So if you're in the market for a watermaker, have a look at them, make your own decision. This is Indonesia. Australia's near neighbour, yet with many parts that feel as remote as anywhere on earth. This nation of over 17,000 islands, a melting pot of 1,300 distinct ethnic groups and cultures, is where we plan to explore. Transportation methods can be limited in these far-flung places, but we have our dream time. Not only our means of travel, but also our floating home. We invite you to sail along with us on our 41 year old catch as we set out on an adventure of a lifetime. Welcome to season four, Dreamtime in Indonesia.